It's a question that almost everyone wants to argue about and a debate that never seems to end. But before you throw the Haram police card at me, let me just say, I'm not here to get into this argument. I'm not here to discuss the legal rulings on instruments, on singing, on drums, on nasheeds, or anything of that sort. I'm here to do something different. Actually, you know what? Scrap the word Haram. Let's just ask ourselves, is music harmful? And when we say music, can I just say, I'm speaking about the music that the majority of people are listening to today. The music that's on our radios, on our iTunes playlists, on our TVs, YouTube channels. This is the music I want to speak about. Should we, as Muslims, be fine with these kinds of songs? Well, let's take a look at the top 100 billboard charts today. The top five songs currently are Despacito, Wild Thoughts, What I Like, I'm the One, and Unforgettable. You don't have to look far to see that in each and every single one of these songs are messages calling to sexual promiscuity, violence, drugs, alcohol, arrogance, and the worst of social behaviors. And look, I know what you're thinking. Not all music is like this. True, but the statistics speak for themselves when they say that the majority of mainstream music is riddled with sexual references, drug references, references to alcohol, violence, and antisocial behavior. And by the looks of it, it is only getting worse year in, year out. And as I said, I'm not here to argue about the different opinions and rulings on instruments, because in all honesty, we're well beyond this argument. There's no point in arguing whether or not instruments are halal when little kids are listening to people like Nicki Minaj. Honestly, we need to move forward and just admit something for what it is. It's wrong. And of course, we can argue that we're strong and we have resolve and we won't allow such music to influence us or affect us. That's fine. You probably are strong, but whether you admit it or not, it's subconsciously having an effect on you. And if you don't believe me, I have a suggestion for you. Studies suggest that teenagers spend up to four hours a day listening to such music. Why not grant the Qur'an access to your ears just for a portion of this time and see if it doesn't have an effect on your heart? Even if you don't understand a word being recited, it will affect you. It will have some sort of effect on your heart. And lastly, for those that are weak, for those that have shortcomings, like myself, the least we could do is at least admit that it's wrong. Because the first step in stopping something is to acknowledge that there's a problem. Let's no longer justify this sin. Let's admit it for what it is. It's wrong. And the sooner we make this acknowledgement, the sooner we can make the intention to start making a change today. May Allah help us all. Jazakallah khairan and thank you very much.